In this lesson, I will be discussing how to turn on dynamic input as well as how to use it efficiently in AutoCAD. First of all, I want to give you an example of drawing a 5x5 five five square using polar coordinate methods that we've learned so far. So if I start with a line command, and if I want to create a 5x5 five five square, I'm just going to start by clicking a point on my screen. And then in my command line, I'm simply going to type at 5 for the length of the line, the angle symbol, and 0 to draw a line straight to the right 5 units long or 5 inches long. Next, I want to go straight up 5. So once more, I'm going to go with at 5. The angle symbol and straight up is 90 degrees, so I'll put in 90 and enter. 5 straight to the left, so at 5 at an angle of 180 to go straight to the left. And then finally, I can close, but I will just put in at 5 at an angle of either 270, or we could also call that negative 90. And then I want to press enter, and I've now constructed my 5x5 five five box. I'm going to go ahead and escape to cancel that, and show you what that looks like if I were to use dynamic input. First of all, where do I turn dynamic input on? I have a status bar button for dyna dynamic input, but it doesn't show up right now, so I need to turn that button on. I'm going to resize my screen a little bit here so that you'll be able to see my pop-up menu, but what we're going to do is we're going to click the customization button down here on the end of the status bar. And this allows me to turn on and off buttons on the status bar. Now this doesn't necessarily turn the feature, the function itself on or off, it just turns the button on or off. So I'm going to choose dynamic input and click back out in my screen, stretch this back out. And you can see down here on my status bar, I've got a new button here. This is my dynamic input. I'm going to go ahead and click on that to turn that on. So let's take a look at what's different now in AutoCAD. When I start my line command, the first thing you'll notice is next to my mouse, I've got the specify first point prompt, just like you do in the command line. So much of dynamic input, the idea is to get you looking at your mouse and not looking at your command line. So you can see some of the same information there. When I click a point somewhere on screen, you'll notice now that as I'm moving my mouse around, I'm getting a length of a line and I'm also getting an angle of a line. First thing I want to mention about the angle is do not trust that angle. It's actually a rounded off value based upon the units of this particular drawing. So do not trust that value. The length itself, all I have to do is type in the length of line that I want. So I'm going to type in 5 to create another 5x5 five five box. But instead of pressing enter, in which case if I press enter it's just going to draw it at this weird angle, I want to press the tab key instead. And pressing tab takes me to the angle box. Now you'll see that as I move my mouse around, I'm locked on to a 5 inch long line and the angle is simply the item that I can change. So if I want to go straight to the right, I'm just going to type 0 and enter and I draw a line 5 straight to the right. Now if I want to draw a line 5 straight up, once more I'll type in 5 for my length and tab over to the angle box. And then as I've got my mouse up here, I'm going to type in 90 and enter to go straight up. Then as I'm going straight to the left, once more, 5 for my distance, tab over to the angle box, and 180, and enter to create that line. Now at this point I can close, but I want to show you something to watch out for with the angles. So thus far, when we've talked about polar coordinates, we've talked about the fact that 0 is straight to the right, 90 is straight up, 180 to the left, and 270 straight down. However, when dynamic is turned on, that's not necessarily true. Dynamic really just looks at 0 through 180. So you'll notice the angle box as I go around here. There's 90. Eventually I get almost to 180, and then it starts counting back down from the bottom. Notice that value as it's counting down. It's not negative. It's a positive value as well. So in this case, when you're using dynamic, you don't want to type in an, a negative angle value. You just simply want to move your mouse the direction you want the line to go. So if I type in 5 and press tab, if my mouse is above the original point and I type 90 and enter, it's going to go straight up. If my mouse is below the start point and I type 90 and enter, it's going to go straight down. So I'll go ahead and type 90 and enter. And there you can see that I was able to construct that last line there using the dynamic input method.
Another thing that's important to note, especially if you've gotten used to using relative or absolute coordinate entry methods, when dynamic is on, it kind of changes the rules of what the default is. So I'm going to turn off dynamic, and so far we've learned that the default in AutoCAD is absolute coordinates. So if I start the line command and type in 1, 1 and press enter for my first point, it goes to the absolute coordinate of 1, 1. If I want to go to, a, say, 3, 2 for the next point, I can type in 3, 2 and press enter. And now from the origin, it's gone over 3 and up 2. So it's going to the absolute coordinates. Watch what happens when I turn on dynamic. So I'll turn on dynamic. I'll click a point anywhere on screen here for my start point. And I'm going to type in 3, 2. I'm not going to type in the at sign, which would give me relative coordinates. I'm just going to type in 3, 2. And when I press enter, you can actually see that it did not go back to the absolute coordinate of 3, 2. It went 3 to the right and 2 up. And if you take a look at, at the command line, you can actually see there's an at sign in there, which I never typed. So when dynamic input is on, by default, it will give you relative coordinates. So if I don't want relative coordinates, there's a couple things I can do. One keyboard shortcut is you can start with the pound symbol, which is shift and the number three. So if I go ahead and put in the pound sign and then three comma two, AutoCAD reads that as the absolute coordinate, three comma two. And as you can see, it jumps back to that original point. Of course, if you don't want to type in the pound sign, you can always just turn off the dynamic input for a click, and you will be back to relative coordinates. That was a look at dynamic input in AutoCAD.